Penelope here, back with another RemNote tutorial. I'll quickly give you ideas on how to take notes for a history class using RemNote featuring the 80-20 rule. I actually moved my extended intro, so feel free to check that out. But for this example, I'll be using this PDF of this world history textbook from this website. Step 1. Download PDF. Step 2. Upload PDF on RemNote PDF Editor. Step 3. Take overview notes. For this RemNote video, I'll choose this chapter to work with. And skimming, <laughs> skimming through this, I'm, I already know I'm inclined to make everything a REM reference, like every place, every date, every term, every person, like so. But sadly, I just don't have time to do that for a 40-page chapter, much less than a book. Instead, here's my plan. First is I will write an outline of the chapter. Second is I would answer guiding questions. And third is I will focus on the key terms. I have a math economics degree, so feel free to take my advice with a grain of salt in taking history notes. But if I was still in university, I would apply the 80-20 rule, which basically means 80% of your results come from 20% of your effort. So I would ask myself, if I only had 10 minutes to study this 40-page chapter, what is the best use of my time? And for me, that's when writing outline of the chapter comes in. So establishing hierarchy using RemNote headers, because it's the best way to see from bird's eye view. I mean, will it be enough to pass exam? Most likely not, but you'll know the gist of the chapter. So RemNote had a recent glow up, as you can see here. It's funny because before I used to deliberately not do this when I studied because I didn't want any spoilers. But trust me, spoilers are more than okay when studying. So just highlight the blocks and press H1 for heading 1 and H2 for heading 2. Okay, so after that, if I have more time, most, most likely I would, I'll ask myself again. If I only had one hour to study this 40-page chapter, what is the best use of my time? And for me, it'll be to answer the guiding questions. So I will skim through the entire chapter again to just answer these questions. Like that's all I'm doing, answering the questions. Type slash to see all these options and I'm gonna choose the list answer card. Using quote reference here. Well, I'm actually not going to answer these questions, but you know what I mean. So you see what I'm doing here, right? Before, we were just looking at the, at, at the forest, and now we were looking at the trees in the forest. So we're getting more detailed here. So now, I will ask myself, if I had three hours to study this 40-page chapter, what is the best use of my time? And my answer is focus on key terms. So key terms are obviously enumerated here, um, but thankfully there are also these bolded words, which just makes it easy. Um, but yeah, I'll just skim through this chapter again to write those down, then only take down notes about them. Just highlighting on the PDF editor and then Control C, then Control V on the RemNote editor. So I'm not going to do this for all sections here, but you get the idea. After writing down the key terms under the respective section, I'm going to start to take notes just about them and skip paragraphs if need be. Calling a rem reference by typing two brackets. 
I just, I love this because it's just more methodical because I don't have to read chunks of paragraphs. All right, so step four, let's use more RemNote features. Idea one is make regular flashcards. You can choose if it's backwards, forwards, or both sides. Idea two is use image occlusion. Control drag, copy, paste, click the three dots. And then maybe I want to remember Perseus and Andromeda or where it was found or what the object is. <laughs> There's so many possibilities. And if you want to memorize a map, you can use the image occlusion cards for this. Idea three is use rem references or universal descriptors or whatever you want really to create a timeline. So I personally love to do this so I can get a holistic view of what was happening in the world during that time. I mean, these are BCE, so I don't think I have anything yet here by RemNote that was at that time. But if it was like from 1863 to 1947, I would have connected it with Henry Ford or Henry Ford was alive then. And I don't know, I, it's, just, it's just fascinating to me. And it would have made that memory stronger in my brain because it's not lonely. It's not just by itself. Anyways, um, check out my bi-directional linking video if you want to hear me rave about this feature. Fourth idea is knowledge graphs. So obviously I actually haven't been serious in studying for this chapter, so there's not a lot here going on, but I'm sure some of these are gonna be connecting um, in the end, which is very, very cool to see. It's a great visual representation. All right, then step five, review them. So just review the flashcards. In the past, my challenges in studying history is it seems like they're just lonely, cold facts. I thought it was just stuff to memorize all the names and terms and places and dates. But I realize now, what if I just looked at it like listening or reading a story? For example, if you're an avid Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings fan, I bet you actually didn't intentionally memorize the places and names, right? But you know them by heart because the places and names are embedded in the story. And that's really how I think of bi-directional linking and RemNote helps me do that. See you in the next video.